Hello and welcome back to yet another tutorial. So today we're going to continue where we left off and as you can see there are a bunch of issues. The first issue that you might notice is the fact that right now I'm moving my mouse to the left and we're moving to the right and I'm moving to the right and we're moving to the left. I'm moving down and we're moving up. All the values are inverted. All the uh, commands I want to do are inverted for my mouse movement so it's a bit hard to navigate and also the movement system we're going to make some adjustments to and we can't actually jump yet so there's a whole lot of things to do but most importantly I can look all the way down and go back 360 degrees so a lot of things to fix and to modify let's go ahead and get started so this is where we left off I added some color to the different uh, not node trees that we made so the first thing we want to do is actually fix the inverted uh, movement. So when I move my mouse here in this in this cam look uh, logic node tree, we have a value from the multiplier right here that is attached to the delta time. I'm going to talk about that later because we're going to need it again. Uh, we can see it's a positive value. If I set that to a minus 0 0.1 and same for the horizontal movement because these are both the vertical and horizontal movements, uh, now they should be re-inverted so now they work in the right way so when I move one angle the camera will follow that angle in real world and in the game so uh, that that's fixed and uh, now we want to work on something uh, different we need to work on actually a fluid movement system because I noticed uh, thanks to the help of quantum coder that I had forgotten to use delta time for our player movement even though we used it for our camera movement so it's very important to use it because uh, if you have a player like I do here and a script that says move the player forwards uh, once every single uh, every every update every single frame well the player is going to move one pixel every single frame and there's about 30 frames in a second if you take a normal movie uh, or a standard like phone then let's say it's 30 frames every second the player is going to move 30 pixels every second However, let's say you're on a computer, it's more powerful, you have 200 frames per second on that device. So the, the same script is going to make that same player move 200 frames in a second. So you can see how that's a huge problem if your player is going at a speed that's inc uncontrollable, whereas if you're on a normal phone, it's perfectly normal. That's a huge problem. So to fix that, we use something called delta time. And essentially what it does, delta time, is you multiply it with your speed of your player. So you can plug in that speed and we need to multiply it. And uh, what it's going to do is it's going to get that speed and it's going to uh, modify it so it works the same on all devices. And uh, well, all we need to do to fix our current script to run with delta time is plug in uh, our math node into or where all these... All these um, or this value is branched into so we can plug in this to where we can see all those nodes all those stringy noodles here so now we we're running everything from our math node instead of directly from our value which means our value is going to be much slower so to increase uh, so to combat that we can increase the value in our property panel that we have uh, assigned to our player in our variables panel to something like 4 or 5, something much bigger than a 0 0.05. And now that we have fixed that, we can go on to our next problem. That problem being that our camera is not locked off at a certain limit. Our camera is free rotating, it can rotate 360 degrees a million times over and nothing is going to stop it. So that's very dis disorienting if uh, a player can't actually stop itself from rotating all the way around uh, so let's go ahead and stop it so we're going to set the rotation of a camera to be uh, uh, reset to the limit for example if we go ahead to our player's camera over here our empty it's the empty is what we use to control the up and down movement of our player whereas the uh, left to right movement is controlled by the actual player but if we want to if we want to move to the left and right, then it would actually move our player forwards and backwards, which is not what we want. Which is why we added the empty, which I explained in my previous video. So we can move up and down with the x axes like that. And as you can see on the side here, in the in the x uh, rotation, 
it gives us the actual value that we're rotating on. So we need to stop it at about 70 odd degrees and minus 7, 80 odd degrees maybe a bit further down. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if that object is uh, between those two values and if it surpasses that limit that we're going to set it's going to reset our object to be to the closest of those values. For example if we go all the way down and we're trying to go down even further it's going to say no 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 and it's going to reset me back to that limit and that's essentially what we want to do. So let's plug it into our rotation node. The out of that is going to go into the in of our new set rotation and the object that we're going to set the rotation to is the empty. It's important to fill that out because currently our node tree is hosted on the player and it's not the player we want to affect, it's the empty. So make sure you eye drop that. And now what we want to do is we actually want to get the rotation value of it. So we're going to get rotation of the object. The object, the object in question still being the empty that you must eye drop because it won't directly get it by default. And now what, to, what we want to do is grab the rotation node and we're going to plug that in over here. So as you see we, this rotation is uh, giving us out a coordinates axis. So we need to separate out our rotation. So let's go ahead and grab our separate node. Separate rotation. So now we have our rotation into our rotation and what we want to do is actually work in degrees instead of our radius. So let's set it to degrees and now it's working with the angle and uh, we need to actually set this to a a vector. So let's go ahead and grab another separate node but this time it's going to be a separate x, y and z. As you can see it's converted our rotation to coordinates and that can be put into the separate x, y and z because we don't want to affect all the coordinates we only care about the x because that's the rotation one that's the rotation of the up and down which is what our our node tree is, is all about we don't really care about the x and y so let's just use that x and plug it into the angle however before we do that we need to actually clamp down our values we need to set a limit to which values you can move between and also in this rotation node we also need to affect the degrees and it's going to be axes and angles instead of the other one. And so what we're going to do is we're going to grab a clamp node, put it in there, and we're going to use the x axis to put into the value. And the minimum and maximum as you can see are up here. So our maximum should be about maybe, I don't know, 70 degrees and the down one should be about minus 18 degrees so let's set this to minus 80 for the lowest point and the highest point to about 70 because we want to be able to look a bit further down than we can look up and now we can plug this into the angle and right now uh, yes it's plugged in and right now this is essentially going to get the the um, locate the rotation of our our empty object it's going to separate out the rotation into different axes we're going to look at the x-axis and if it's between minus 80 and 70 then it's going to set the, the rotation of the x-axis that we need to set to 1 uh, if it goes beyond that we need to set it back to it we're not allowed to go beyond that that, that threshold that we set here and the reason we set this x-axis as you can see it goes x, y and z in the order as you would say it. The reason we set it to 1 is a bit like binary. It's either on or it's off. These two are off because we're not looking at them. That one needs to be set to 1 because it's the value we need to check every time. So it's like it activates it if you like. And there we go. Now if we go back to our play, no not that one, this one, there we go. Let's clean it out and normally if we did this right then it should lock off our, our up and down um, axes our up and down rotation to the top as you can see I can't go any further than that as much as I want I can't go and if I go down I'm locked off I'm not allowed to go any further than this so there we go we can no longer rotate round uh, on ourselves 360 degrees and uh, our movement system is just as fluid as before as you can see with our delta time applied so it will be much smoother on any device that we use because it will be the same speed as you can see on screen. 
So now we've pretty much done, uh, well, we've fixed a lot of things. The only trouble we need to uh, we need to address is the jumping mechanic. And I want to allow this player to jump only when it's touching the ground or when it's touching an object, a solid object. I don't want it to be able to spam jump in the air. So to do that, let's go ahead and make sure we have physics applied to our object. So let's go down here and close that column and set the rigid body to be a uh, an active object and set it to be a convex hull might as well uh, unless maybe cylinder no no let's leave it on convex hull that seems about right so what we want to do in the armory props is make sure the two top ones here are set to zero because these are, uh, these are, um, uh, correspond to the x and y values and we don't want our player to be able to fall over on the x or on the y value because uh, if not it would just fall over and we don't want that and we also need to set the angular factor to zero as well so what we want to do now is we need to have a solid object for it to stand on so let's go ahead to the ground and set that to be a passive object set it to be a box and there we go we're good to go now what we want to do is we want to apply a, an impulse a, a, a jump to our well to our player so to do that, let's go ahead and reorganize our node tree. Let's move this down here. Let's move this guy further down as well. So it's a nice little, li a little bit more organized. And we can start working on our jump. So our jump is going to be activated by our space key on our keyboard. So let's go ahead and grab our keyboard node. Set it over here. Uh, leave it, well, it's already set to space. And what we want to do now is we want this only to work when we're touching the ground. So I don't know if you ever used um, tags in Unity, but essentially we can define which objects are solid objects and which objects we're, we're, we're not going to care about. So that's what we're going to implement in this tutorial. So let's go ahead and grab an impulse node. Apply impulse is the one that we want to jump and this is going to be the end goal we're going to jump the player with a specific impulse so let's go ahead and set the uh, set a, a, a chosen a branch node which is essentially a node that allows you to uh, run an argument a boolean a yes or no argument if it's if the um, if the argument is positive if it's yes then it's going to set the uh, impulse to jump and the argument we're going to run is we're going to see if our player is on the ground so let's look for our physics node let's look for has contact array that's the collision node we're going to use actually this reminds me I'm probably going to make a physics tutorial where I'm going to talk about all these different sort of contact nodes that you'll need to know about uh, because I think I, I, I should have done it a long time ago and I've never really got around to it so let's use this has contact to see if we are colliding with our ground currently and the object is obviously going to be our sphere and right now we can see you can plug in an array so what we're going to do is we're going to grab the collection node and this collection node is uh, going to allow us to um, select any sort of collection we want and any object that is inside that collection will be the object that we use to see if it's colliding with it and uh, if it if uh, if we're colliding, for example, with this object and that object's not in the collection, this is going to return a false. It's not on the full on the uh, collection that we want, so we're not going to apply an impulse. So you see that allows you to select which objects you're uh, allowed to jump on and which objects you're not allowed to jump on. So let's press M with the ground selected, and call this a uh, new uh, collection floor or ground or whatever you want. And now you can select it. And any object that you put inside this collection, it will be used to run this argument. And uh, if you, for example, collide with this object, you won't be able to jump because it's not part of that collection. That's just a really cool way to uh, sort of um, build out your world and uh, be able to uh, sort of procedurally be able to jump on any object you want without having to, for example, make a list with all the different objects you can jump on and it allows you to procedurally generate worlds as well because there is a node I actually requested which sets our object I don't know where it is 
uh, yeah, it sets the add object to collection. So if you spawn an object at runtime, you can actually add that object to the collection uh, so it will automatically be applied to that collection so you can use this node setup in procedural world as well which I find is really cool but I think I've talked about it enough now let's talk about this uh, impulse so I want to do the same thing that I did with the player and add a variable that you can control uh, procedurally uh, from anywhere within the game so it's great for using power-ups or boosts or stuff like that let's go ahead and grab another float let's call this property jump and set it to be uh, 5 I think that would be a, a good value now we can use yet another vector node to separate out this impulse because they're all clumped together we don't want to apply uh, an impulse to all the angles at the same time we only want to use one the z and the uh, z uh, axes so let's go ahead and get the property of our object that we just made over here select this object because that's the one who's hosting this property the property is jump and the value is going to be set to z so when uh, our ob when uh, we press space it's going to look if our object is colliding with if our player is colliding with an object from the floor collection if it is then it's going to apply an impulse an impulse that is going to be of a power of five so let's go ahead and play this save it and play it make sure everything is working properly and if it is then I'll be signing off and it will be a done deal done tutorial and we can move we can press space and we're jumping it's a bit a bit high I think but uh, it's working we can actually increase the gravity and as you can see we, we don't actually have any physics on these on these cubes they're actually just there for um, uh, for a way to see to reorient reorient ourselves so we can actually go to our gravity tab down here and you can see the gravity is set to minus 9.8 that's real world gravity so we can actually set this to minus 15 or something a bit higher like that so the gravity is a little bit stronger we can save this again play it and now our gravity is going to pull us down a lot faster so it's going to make more smoother gameplay there we go our gravity is much more stronger and when I spam space in the air it doesn't actually jump continuously because it only allows me to jump when I'm colliding with a, an object that belongs to the floor collection which is something that I find really smart and that I'm really happy with so let's frame this up with control J let's call it jump on floor or is it only allows us to jump when we're colliding with the floor set it to a color and there we go we have yet another episode of our FPS game out of the way so I am going to hopefully make a wall running uh, mechanic but what I'm really interested in that I actually figured out uh, or that I thought about when reading and answering to your comments uh, and also thank you for the warm welcome back to the Armory community uh, I um I was requested to make a a gun mechanic for this game and I thought well I mean I don't really see how that would really figure in to our whole parkour style but then I realized instead of having a gun that shoots people that that destroys things I'm going to make a gun that's part of our game part of our mechanic instead of using the gun to shoot at people you can actually point it to the ground and you can actually be able to, to shoot on the ground or shoot anywhere and it will propel you forwards because we have our um, our system in place that doesn't allow, us, uh, doesn't allow for double jumps well we can actually use that gun to be our extra gun, our extra jump and obviously the gun will have cooldown so you won't be able to spam it either but I think that's a really good thing to go into uh, and we'll be able to have uh, maybe explosions or, or bullets or something like that and uh, it's just a really cool avenue that I would like to explore in the future. So thank you so much for watching to the end. I really hope this was a big help to you people because, uh, well, I haven't been able to post much uh, recently, and I feel like I've been sort of pushed to the side in my in uh, in my uh, armory journey uh, because of life problems. But I'm back now. I don't know for how long. I'm gonna do get as much done as possible. I'm rambling now, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.